Today, the House Judiciary Committee debated two articles of impeachment against President Trump, setting the stage for a vote of the full House. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Well, here we are. We're getting closer to the day when the full House will vote on two articles of impeachment against Trump. For three years, this moment has somehow felt both inevitable and also impossible at the same time. We've all been in this weird limbo where every day Trump does something that makes you think, that dude's gonna get impeached. And then <laughs> the next morning you wake up, check your phone, and there's a news alert that says something like, Republicans shrug off Trump threats to release nude pics unless France sells in the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and then you tune into CNN, and sure enough, there's one Republican after another dodging reporters and literally hiding in elevators to avoid answering questions. Republicans spend so much time in elevators, Ted Cruz is just gonna start showing up to the Senate looking like a bellhop. <laughs> Thanks to Trump, Republicans in elevators react to reporters the way the rest of us react to that weird co-worker who's always inviting you to his DJ gigs. Oh, that's Gary. He's gonna <laughs> give me one of those flyers that says DJ G Money. In fact, Trump himself is reportedly angry that he's being impeached and also shocked that it took this long to get him. CNN reported yesterday that after all the scandals he's weathered and all the crimes he's been implicated in, Trump's actually surprised that this, this is the one that got him. We are hearing President Trump is growing increasingly aggravated over the likelihood that he will be impeached. Meanwhile, a separate Trump advisor said the president has been preparing uh, in his mind for some time that this uh, moment would arrive, suspecting for the better part of the last year that Democrats would try to impeach him after taking control of the House uh, last year. This advisor said Mr. Trump uh, is somewhat taken aback. We should note that it's the Ukraine scandal that is leading to this moment, leading to his uh, impeachment in the House. And we could put this up on screen. This advisor said, uh, and we want to show this quote, uh, frankly, I think he's a little surprised talking about the president here, uh, that it's the Ukraine thing that's done it. That is an amazing confession. Think about that. That's like getting pulled over for a broken taillight and saying, taillight, I got like 10 dead bodies in my trunk. <laughs> Ain't this a kick in the head? <laughs> but it's true. Trump has blatantly and repeatedly abused his powers. He obstructed justice in the Russia probe, inflicted human rights abuses on migrant families, profited from his office, solicited a bribe, and paid hush money in an illegal scheme to cover up an affair. And on top of all that, he attacked a 16-year-old climate activist, Greta Thunberg, simply for trying to save the planet from an existential crisis. Trump tweeted, today, today, Greta must work on her anger management problem, then go to a good old-fashioned movie with a friend, chill, Greta, chill. You want her to chill? Whenever you scream, you look like a tick that's about to burst. I mean, look at him. He looks like a rabid possum hissing at you for disturbing his nest. Also, you are a 73-year-old man attacking a 16-year-old activist because she cares about the environment. Think about how sad that is. You are a husk of a man. Actually, not even for there to be a husk of a man, there would have had to have been a man to begin with. You're a husk of a husk. You are a Russian nesting doll of husks. <laughs> and on top of all that, on top of all that, at this very moment, Trump's henchmen are still in the process of committing crimes for him. His lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, traveled to Europe and specifically Ukraine to keep digging up dirt on Trump's political opponents. With the heat on Rudy Giuliani in the midst of the Ukrainian investigation, Rudy has decided there's no better time for a trip to Eastern Europe interviewing people about Ukraine, more specifically, working on a new project to discredit the Democrats' case against the president. That's right. In the middle of an impeachment inquiry about Ukraine, Rudy decided to go back to Ukraine. That's like going back to the bank you robbed to get your Christmas card photo taken on the security camera. <laughs> Rudy also went to Ukraine as he himself is personally under criminal investigation for his ties to Ukraine. And one of his already indicted henchmen, Lev Parnas, is also in even more hot water now. Remember, these two, Lev and his buddy Igor, you know, the guys who look like two cab drivers from Queens fighting over a passenger? <laughs> hey, I was here first. I'm going to kill you. Okay, see you at Christmas. You are my brother. <laughs> we yesterday, prosecutors asked to revoke Parnas's bail and revealed an incriminating detail about a large sum of money from a foreign country, and you'll never guess which country that money came from. And U.S. prosecutors are seeking to revoke bail for Lev Parnas, an associate of Rudy Giuliani, for lying about a $1 million payment from Russia. That's right. He got a million dollars from someone in Russia. The only way 
That could be more suspicious as if it came in the form of a gym bag filled with unmarked rubles with a luggage tag that said, V. Putin. <laughs> it's like all the threads of every Trump scandal are coming together. Rudy, secret money, Ukraine, Russia. I wouldn't be surprised if, at this point, Robert Mueller himself came to arrest Trump, tore off his mask, and revealed that he was Stormy Daniels the whole time. <laughs> now, usually, Usually, Republicans are able to dodge questions about all this by hiding in elevators. That's one of the many reasons these public impeachment hearings have been so valuable. Republicans have been forced to sit there and confront the evidence in plain sight. And we've all been able to see in real time that they have no defense. They have nothing. That's why, for example, so many of them talk so fast. They're hoping you can't make out any of the words because they know what they're saying is bull****. Ambassador Taylor recalls that Mr. Morrison told Ambassador Taylor that I told Mr. Morrison that I conveyed this message to Mr. Yarmack on September 1st, 2019, in connection with Vice President Pence's visit to Warsaw. They forget the fact that two guys on the call, President Trump and President Zelensky, have said repeatedly there was no pressure, no linkage, no pushing. They forget the fact Ukraine didn't even know aid was held at the time of the call. And they forget the fact, most important, they did nothing to get the aid released, no announcement of any type of investigation. He sounds like the narrator at the end of a drug commercial warning you about the side effects. <laughs> Impeachment may cause fever, headache, vomiting, diarrhea, blurry vision, and, of course, loss of balance. <laughs> These guys don't have any actual arguments. So they just speed through a string of right-wing buzzwords as fast as possible and hope it sounds like a coherent sentence. But sometimes, even they get confused by their own bull****, like the time Lindsey Graham tried to attack the motives of Trump's hand-picked ambassador, Gordon Sondland, the guy who gave a million dollars to Trump's inaugural committee who said unequivocally under oath that there was a quid pro quo with Ukraine and who pulled a flea bag in this photo where he looked directly into the camera during his hearing. That's fantastic. That looks like the post credit scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Well, Graham tried to claim on Fox News that Sondland was somehow working with the Democrats on the committee and that the Ukrainian company Hunter Biden worked for, which was called Burisma, deserved to be investigated, and yet Graham couldn't pronounce either the name Burisma or the name Sondland. There was concern that the prosecutor was getting too close to Hunter Biden, that people from Baramusa, whatever the name of the company, a conversation with Sunderland. Now, here's a question. Why did Sunderland change his testimony? Was there a connection between Sunderland and Democratic operatives on the committee? It makes me incredibly, incredibly suspicious. Why did Sunderland change his mind? I don't know. Why did you change his name to Sunderland? It's like when your dad tries to text you about a movie you just saw but can't remember any of the names. I like that actor. What's his name? Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> We've seen this in hearing after hearing. Republicans just ramble nonsensically because it's their only tactic. All the evidence is there as Democrats laid out in their speeches during the Judiciary Committee's markup hearing on Wednesday night and again this morning. President Donald J. Trump wielded the enormous powers of the presidency to cheat in the 2020 election. We must hold this president accountable for corrupting our democracy. The ongoing pattern of this president's abuse of power, his obstruction of investigations, refusing to turn over even one document. In this scheme, Donald Trump was not an incidental player. He was the central player. The president was the first and best witness in this case. The president is the smoking gun. It's true. Trump is the smoking gun. And much like a gun, his brain is only capable of holding six words at a time. <laughs> Republicans have no coherent defense, so they just have to make stuff up. And in some cases, I mean, they're literally making up words. Today, during the Judiciary Committee debate, the ranking member, Doug Collins, complained once again about the impeachment process, which is both in the Constitution and has been open to the public, and Colin seemed to make up a word. It is amazing, though, to, to hear now they've gotten really sensitive about process on the majority side. We actually pointed out the, tra the tragedy and the travesty of being a rubber stamp in this committee, and, Mr. and the gentleman from Florida has brought out a couple of things. But let me just remind, as he said just a few minutes ago, the, the White House going to send everything? No, nope, it's just like everything else. It all goes through the whim and the whimber of the chairman and the majority. The whim and the whimber sounds like the name of a Russian soap opera about Lev and Igor. Republicans keep insisting that Trump was just worried about corruption in general and that he wasn't demanding an investigation into his political rival, Joe Biden, even though Trump mentioned the Bidens by name on his infamous phone call multiple times. So that argument is obviously ridiculous. This whole thing was all about Joe Biden and the Democrats. Trump and Republicans had full control of the government for two years and didn't say a word 
about corruption in Ukraine until Biden announced his candidacy. And denying that basic fact makes you look ridiculous, which is what happened to Republican lawyer Steve Castor at the judiciary hearing on Monday when he tried to claim that Joe Biden was not a front runner in the presidential race. Sir, would you agree that Joe Biden was a leading Democratic contender to face President Trump in 2020? I wouldn't agree with that. You disagree with it. So, sir, it's your testimony it's too early. that President Trump did not view President Biden to be a legitimate contender. I don't know correct? what President Trump believed or didn't believe, but it's too early. Sir, as part of your inquiry, did you determine whether President Trump tweeted at all about Vice, former Vice President Joe Biden between January and July 25th, and how many times? I didn't, I didn't look at Twitter. I try to stay off Twitter lately. I know. I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I get my news from Twitter. I keep all my information right here in my grocery bag. I, <laughs> I, I got uh, some old shoes I'm taking to Goodwill, and... Uh, Got some trail mix that I mean. Uh, oh, here's that Metro card. I found my Metro card, you guys. <laughs> Republicans seem to believe that if you disagree with them, you are illegitimate, that the process of holding a lawless president responsible for his abuses of power is illegitimate, and that Trump and his cohorts are simply above the law. And so, as the House prepares to pass articles of impeachment and move to a trial in the Senate, Lindsey Graham, who chairs the Judiciary Committee in the Senate, has said he has one goal to end the trial as quickly as possible without even calling witnesses. My goal is to end this as soon as possible for the good of the country because I think it's a danger to the presidency to legitimize this. A couple things here then. Does that mean no witnesses at all? I don't need any witnesses at all. Okay, and then. I am ready term, to go. Of, in terms of time, <laughs> is it a week? Is it two weeks? Is it a month? What is it? It's closer to a week for sure. A week? You want to call zero witnesses? and hold the trial in a week. Most trials take forever. Roger Stone's trial took so long, it started in the 18th century. Look at that. <laughs> it's his actual outfit from the inauguration. He looks like he got arrested for carjacking the Hindenburg. <laughs> we now finally have two articles of impeachment awaiting a full House vote, which will likely make Trump the third president in history to be impeached. Republicans have no defense. All they can do is accuse Democrats of following... The whim and the whimber. This has been A Closer Look.